Welcome back, good people. This is part two in the No Bullshit series. There's plenty of series out there about cruising catamarans and the top dead catamarans of all time. This is the No Bullshit one, where we go through ratios and simple things for you to consider before you choose a cruising catamaran for yourself. Now, last time we looked at speed, which I think is the most important attribute of a cruising catamaran. Basically, if there's some weather coming, you have the speed to get out of its way. And also, if you're doing big passages, well, the length of time for the passages is gonna be significantly reduced, so you've got less chance of getting clobbered. Let's recap quickly what we learned from last week. Modern production cats often have a lot of hull to push through the water compared to performance cruising cats, making them much slower. I mean, just check out the hull overlay. The yellow is the Mumby hull cross-section, which is ridiculously small compared with the production cat. Weight also affects speed. Here is a bit of a list, the top three being performance cruising cats, but even they have a big weight difference. But check out the lower ones. They are very heavy indeed. The heavier a boat is, the harder it is to get moving and the slower it will be. Remember, speed is your friend. In how many bloody ways are you going to hobble your racehorse, your catamaran? I mean, with some of the modern production cats, they feed them so much, they're so unbelievably fat and huge, they're barely able to move. Then you go and shove the fattest jockey you can inside of it, which is your gear to fill up all the volume because there's so many spaces to fill up. Then you're going to go give it a fifth leg for it to trip over the mini keel, which slows it down anyway, running through the water. Look, catamarans are built for speed. Now, I'm not talking about crazy speeds, people. I'm talking about manageable speeds. When I was on the HH55 for that long weekend and we were sailing, it was only about 12 knots. And we were going along and I was enjoying it. I wasn't enjoying the luxury, people. I was enjoying being on someone else's boat because it's always good to be on someone else's boat. No responsibility. And it was a nice boat. And uh, we're going along, and then I started looking at the water, and I went, we're really cranking. And I found out we were doing 10 knots. And it was effortless, you know? And it just seemed normal. There was no skipping. There was no... I just thought we were doing five or six knots because it wasn't a strong wind at all. And um, that's where the advantage lieth in the speed. Without even having any effort at all, we're doing 10 knots. Now, your average monohull on a passage will average somewhere between 4 and 6 knots. And here we are doing 10, and we can probably easily do 11 or 12. But you don't have to. If you're doing 10, that's going to be such a vast reduction of your passage time, it's not funny. And look, what, what I suggest you do... Why don't you go check out some other YouTube channels that are that have big production cats that are very heavy, the, the, the variety that I don't like, and just see what average speeds they have. Now, I'm not talking about what they glimpse on their instruments. Oh, nine. Oh, we're doing nine. We're talking about a passage where you accumulate it over three weeks. And guess what you'll find, people? I won't tell you. It's a bit of a hint. But, you know, well, I will tell you. They're still in the range of the monohulls. In this episode, we are going to look at beam to length ratio. You have no doubt heard this before since it is quoted as if it comes from the Bible. But do you know it is absolute rubbish? And here is why. A boat does not sail to its overall length. It doesn't sail to its overall beam. Well, not in catamarans. What a boat does say, and the physics explains all of this, what a boat does sail to is its waterline length and its beam centerline. All the physics is around that. So the most appropriate ratio is the beam centerline to the waterline length ratio. So what does it actually tell you, this thing? Well, well, it tells you the stability of the catamaran. How easy is it for it to tip over sideways? So, and also related to that is how much sail you can have up to sail it. But the ratio also tells us a lot when it's quite small. Now, we already said it's about stability, so it tells you how stable the catamaran is sideways. It also, because of that, we have less sail area up, so the boat's going to be slower, so that's two. And the third is when the hulls are closer together, you, got, you get more wave interactions underneath, which causes more drag to the boat. So it slows it down even more. 
Now this is all well and good, but you might be a little bit confused. So I want to explain to you how the broadening of the hulls of a catamaran actually changes the ratio. So let's check out this diagram. Here is a typical catamaran. The beam centerline length is basically the distance between the centers of the hulls. Now watch what happens when the hulls are made fatter. The center lines move closer together and the distance becomes shorter. So with the hulls getting wider and wider and wider for a given length, the center lines are getting closer and closer together and the catamaran is becoming more and more unstable. Now the trouble with this is some people out there, they see these production cats everywhere, they see them on YouTube and they go, well, they are doing it, I want to do it too, it's my dream too. And they are lulled into the false sense of security that these catamarans are completely safe. And that is not correct. Here is a mumby and here is a production cat that I don't like. Let's melt them into each other so we can see the ratios. In actual fact, this production cat has a very high beam to length ratio. Now remember, this ratio here is rubbish. 56% dropping down to 37%. Not a great number. So when a salesman quotes the 56%, he really is misleading you. Now before we go on further, I just want to explain, and you might remember from the uh, first episode in this series, um, there's no kickbacks for me for the Mumby 48, okay? No Mumby 48 production crew are waiting to whisk me away after this series and build a cat for me. Uh, Tim Mumby basically sells you the plans and you build them yourself. He does do, he does build, and I'll put the details there and you can contact him and try and get him to build you one. But he doesn't build that many. And uh, look, basically people buy the plans and build the boat. But you can try. Now, so there's no kickback. I'm still buying the plans all i'm doing is giving you my honest opinion there's nothing clouding this okay and i've chosen the mumby and so i'm referencing everything back to the mumby so yes that's why i'm going on about the mumby but i still think it is the safest fastest and best value for your money catamaran out there Let's try that again with another modern production cat that I don't like. We melt them into each other again, and here is the important ratio. The production cat is down to 35%. I'm not getting on that boat. Here's a fun experiment. Next time you're with a salesman who's trying to sell you a catamaran, ask them for the better ratio, the beam center line to the waterline length, and see what you get. See if they give you the numbers. I bet you you don't get it. I think the only way you're really going to get it is you're going to have to go on the boat with a tape measure and then jump in the water with your snorkeling gear and measure it up yourself. And then when you work out the ratios, you'll understand why they don't publish the numbers. Oh, it started to rain, people, but the filming must go on. Uh, now, you could be forgiven thinking that if you've got a low ratio, let's just have a big one. It's got to be better, right? Mm, not really. What happens is you lose your maneuverability. So let's take, for instance, tacking. To tack a boat, to bring it all the way around, the wider the boat is, the more energy you need, and it's a bit tricky, especially if you're heading into waves because they can slow you down. So on Long Reef, I think um, we had quite a, a, a large BCL to LWL ratio, and it was hard to get across. You really had to look for a, a flat spot, and go in a nice controlled turn to keep your momentum. If you turn too quickly, you'd wash on the side and you'd spill too much energy. I know a guy, in fact, that sailed around on a catamaran with a very large uh, ratio. And um, whenever he tacked, he put the lured engine on because there was no way for him to get around. Well, it, it, maybe he got, you know, 10% right, he said, but it wasn't worth the hassle for him. So you don't want to lose the maneuverability. So the sweet spot is about 40 to 42%, I reckon. In fine conditions, the reduction of this ratio is not going to cause you really any grief. The trouble is, there are lots of other things that have been tweaked by the modern uh, production cat manufacturers, and they've really done a number on everyone, flooded the market, and... They've tweaked a whole lot of other things. And what's happened is 
what we now see we regard as the norm and in my opinion it's unsafe now i'm talking about things that can add to the well let's say instability of these modern production catamarans we're talking about high center of gravity because they're making the boats higher we'll go through these in further episodes and they're also because of that then usually the helm is placed above the cockpit roof the boom is getting higher and the sail area the actual center of effort of the sail is much higher in itself so all of these things are trying to tip the boat over and that's why in not even gale force conditions these boats are getting in trouble so just a little bit of education i'm not trying to scare people well some guy in the comment section last week said oh you're trying to scare people well physics and statistics aren't scary they're just maths so you want to pay attention so watch the series learn something apply your own ratios look at certain things and make a good decision and hopefully you'll buy a safe catamaran for you <laughs>